The total education now transforming so that we get coming up with the first tertiary education policy. The renewal of technical and vocational education and training in Ghana. The renewal of teacher education in Ghana. The transformation of our schools, infrastructure, curricula, and everything that was left. In fact, I left the Ministry of Education with scars that will remain for me forever. Even in the time of COVID, when everybody was at home, we worked 24 7 in the Ministry of Education to ensure that we could even put our curricula and zero rate it on all the net mobile networks in the country for education to get. So the students for which we talk celebrated with us by coming up with the best SSS exams ever in the history of this That to me is the second humbling moment that after talk, after the detractors had had their say, and oh my God, they didn't have their say. I could read about myself in the papers and I couldn't believe that I was who I was reading about. But I saw that out of jewelry, gold must pass to be fire. And I found it really resting that we have paid our dues. Leadership, leadership, leadership is everything. If today we are celebrating UPSA, it is just because we had a transformative leaders and the board chairman, Dr. Kunobu, and the vice chancellor, my, 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 my senior, Oko. We got to the ministry with only one thing to serve and to support every institution from kindergarten to university that would show leadership. I'm not sure in the four years or eight years that Oko has been here, that we've met, I've asked a place for anybody in UPSC, for anybody. That is not the purpose of which we should have leaders. Leaders should really learn the act of service. And always think from day one, when you are given the opportunity, what will they say about me that have left the institution? What will people say about Dr. Winnie and my own senior Oko when they've left? The transformation that has happened in UPSC, I used to say, it has never happened in any university, those who came before him and those who came after UPSC. What has been achieved by Dr. Henry Kunebi and Boko together should also be celebrated more than the celebration that we are celebrating. <laughs> Everywhere I pass, I even wanted to become an honorary member of the faculty so that I can come and learn how to play tennis here. Every day, almost every day, I pass in front of UPSA to get to where I want to go to. And I just love the road because I see transformation right in front of my eyes. Not only curriculum, also infrastructure. Not only curriculum and infrastructure, but also leadership and example that we are finding. And I hope that the incoming vice chancellor, another good friend of mine, I know their shoes are big. But you should also be able to leave a lasting legacy when you have left this. Don't think that you will be leaving your when you are about leaving is when you have to do your legacy. You have to write your legacy script the one that you get into office. Because that is what you'll be remembered for. You'll not be remembered for how many students you helped come to UPSA. You'll not be remembered for the politics of USA, the lectureship, professorship politics, the politics of the council in approving professorship. That's not what you remember for. You remember when you leave, what did he also add to you? Yes. That, I think, is what is at, at, at the stake at the moment in this country. That Ghana is at the crossroads. We want people, or we should elect people who would make a great transformation, transformative leadership. Not people who, who will come and get our vote because they just want our vote not voting for sentimental reasons because we live within reality we don't live within sentiments we don't live within cliches we live in the practical aspect of day-to-day -day transformation in people's lives people forget that nearly hundred thousand students every year couldn't go to school because our end certificate was bec and they had passed and couldn't go to secondary school 
And when you finish BEC, the certificate doesn't qualify you to apply for any job in the country. And these 100,000 students, lives, human beings, were left out of our accounting system in this country. Free SHS has transformed the life. If nothing for the girl child. Before we started Free SHS, for every 100 students, boys that went to school, only 65. And every year, check the papers, from 2012 to 2016, and even before that, the issue of teenage pregnancy was so rife and rampant in the country. Every day, teenage pregnancy. Every day, we could quantify the number of teenagers who are gotten pregnant. Why would they get pregnant when there's no future for them? And now, for every 100 boys, there are 107 girls. Two things that drove me passionately in education was to help the girl child and to help the poor. To help the girl child and to help the poor. To help the girl child and to help. And I'm very, very happy when I go to nursing training institutions and teacher training institutions. That itself has been transformed to education degree awarded institution, all my teacher training institutions. And I find the preponderance of women and ladies there, I ask myself, where would they have been? In other people's bedrooms, being the only thing God had made them. Carriers of babies, no way. Ghana will never see a transformation if we don't invest in the girl child. The girl child. And it is my professor of obstetric and gynecology, interestingly, Professor Martin, who said to me that he doesn't believe in family planning. And to me, I was taken aback, Professor of Objectives, one of the premier obstetrician gynecologists in this country. Prof, why don't you believe in? And he said, Napo, just put the girl child through education and you'll solve the issue of teenage pregnancy. And it's true. By the time the girl child finishes tertiary education, she may be 19 or 20 years. And when they enter the university, they don't have children left, right, and center. Their lives are already planned. Their lives are on a trajectory to a better future and prosperity for all of us. That. I always say, I can't talk about Dr. Hini Kulebu and talk about Oko Senior. Remember, colleagues, when you finish that institution, Everybody is a senior, right? Yes. So we are all seniors. I can't talk about I'm talking about UPS and the leadership they've brought just across the road. When I became the minister, there were universities that are taking millions of dollars to do similar infrastructure. And as we speak, the Ministry of Finance is paying for that debt. Similar they are taking millions in United States dollars to build the kind of infrastructure UPSA is inaugurating. And today, none of it was built, and Ghana government is still paying the debt. That is the difference. So I was very, very proud, and I will still remain proud as a minister, former minister, hopefully former, former minister. Education, I won't have to go there again. But to say that the best university management I ever came across my four years, and I can say, even today, is Dr. Hini Kolebi teaming up with CBL. I'm sure we are not in it for ourselves. Like I said, I hardly even spoke to him. Uh, hardly. <laughs> so, so, thank you for the service you have rendered to UPSA on education in general. By naming this hostel after me, you inspire me to do even more for education. Hopefully, even more for more than education. And to continuously support institutions like ours and yours in their quest for academic and infrastructural excellence. Thankfully, ladies and gentlemen, 
I hope he's happy, also happy to serve the man who has given the clearest indications of resolve to ensure that solid foundations laid by the Nabidan Peku Fabulous Administration in the educational sector is built upon. That man is His Excellency Alaji Dr. Mahmoud Bahami. I then say that, I then say that it is only under his competent watch that the gains we've chopped, the foundations with lead can be brought to fruition. We must protect educational excellence in Ghana. We must protect leadership excellence in Ghana. It shouldn't be for everybody. It should be for those who are prepared and prepared right to offer exemplary leadership. Thank you. to remain in this edifice. And therefore, we dedicate it unto you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And all shall say, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Tete. Uh, kindly, the team that's going to help um, unveil the name on the building. Kindly come closer to me as we cut the ribbon. Kindly. Faculty members and lecturers, staff, lead we pray for safe arrival in our various locations as we go in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you, thank you so much. Um, 
Honorable Mr. Prepper, we thank you for making time. Thank you, Council Chair. Uh, deans, directors, faculty officers, students, everybody who made time to be here. We really, really appreciate you. Thank you and have a fantastic morning. Thank you very much. <laughs>